Shutting down? No. Still there? Yes. Yep. Okay. <laughs> hey, buddy, where are you going? Going to Canalot Hill, but looks more like a mountain to me. Hey, I'm going that way too. Hop on. Let's do it. New on the hill up here with all the gang, Bash Script, and all those guys were here at the hill. Thank you very much for following us over here to this wonderful new network. And it's a really great to see y'all. Um, it's going to be a little bit weird because we got new stream service, we got a new streaming program, and Andy Price's internet is going in and out. <laughs> so we're going to do the best we can. And it's probably full of cat hair. Probably full of cat hair, it might be. Yeah. And that is the gentleman of the hour, Mr. Hey. Andy Price. How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing well. How about you? I am doing awesome today. Excellent. Awesome today, because I'm learning this new software, and I'm excited for things it can do. But the thing is, for some reason, when I'm playing videos, I can hear people on the... Um, I can hear screwy, and I can hear you. So i got to figure that out. But, you know, it is what it is. It is what okay. it is today. So we're going to have a good time as to what's going on. So I'm going to get this out of my way here. Uh, so I've got, a, I've got a freaking script full of stuff. We're Speaking of which, Screwy, how are you? How are you? Yes. How's Screwy? Screwy. I'm, I'm doing pretty good. Sorry, I was, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm multitasking beyond all heck. <laughs> yes, he is. Yes, he is. So let's get the screwball up in the corner because I can do this now because the new, the new stuff lets me do that. So let's get Screwy. There he is, right in the corner where he should be with me. All the time. And my unforgiving mechanical keyboard. <laughs> your unforgiving mechanical keyboard. Yes. I think, you know, when that thing breaks, we're going to actually, like, auction it off as a... What? Yeah. We'll auction it off as an actual testament to stay burning, my friend. I'm sure your fans would <laughs> hey. love to throw bits at charity for your mechanical keyboard. This this is a Razer keyboard, so it's not going to break. <laughs> okay. Well, there you go. So, and we're here with Andy. Andy is, of course, the lead artist on the M. My Little Pony comic series, along with the writer Katie Cook, who I'm sorry could not be here tonight because of crossed wires and things. So, she lost a pet, I lost a pet, we're a little bit, you know, things with the family have to come first. So, she will probably join us later in the summer. I have talked to her, and she does want to come on the show, but it has to be to her schedule, and that's great. That's okay. Not a problem. We'll have her uh, a little bit later in the summer. But Andy is the wonderful artist behind the My Little Pony comics that does so, so wonderfully awesome stuff. I mean, geez, look at this cover of this latest comic, which is number 26, The Good, The Bad, and The Ponies. Look at that. That is some gorgeous stuff right there. It's Thank you. It's amazing. I had to buy like three copies of this. One to read, one to keep, <laughs> and one to give away tonight. So with that, we're going to talk, we're going to talk comics. We're going to talk lots of comics. Comics. We're going to talk about comic books. We're going to talk about comic books because we're like comic book guys here. Yeah. Yes. Because I go back to comics like to the mid-80s. And I'm sure Mr. Price goes back at least that far. Uh, yeah, the mid-80s. The 1880s. <laughs> the mid-1880s, yes. <laughs> I got my, my real Hilo Hattie shirt on from Hawaii. So this is a special occasion with a brand new network. So we're going to do it upright. Uh, so the first question, 
First question I have for you. What are some of the cartoons and comics you watched or read as a child or are still watching to this day? Um, <clears throat> well, <clears throat> the things that actually got me go going into comic books were uh, the old uh, 60s Amazing Spider-Man, the old Vincent DeFate Spider-Man cartoon, mm -hmm. and the Adam West Batman television series. Those were the two big things that really got me into comic books. And mm -hmm. I learned to read on comic books, oh, yeah. actually. Oh, sure a lot of people um, You know, so... Um, and as far as cartoons, you know, I, I am the same age as Scooby-Doo, uh, <laughs> the world's o oldest uh, Great Dane. Yes. Uh, we're both... We're both about to turn forty-six. So, I'm only, uh, I'm so only a I year watched, older than you are. Are you really? Yeah, I'm forty-seven. Well, good. That makes me feel a little better. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I watched Scooby Doo and I watched you know uh, Super Friends and mm -hmm. the Laugh Olympics. Oh yeah. Uh, HR Puff and stuff and oh yeah, uh, we can talk about Splits. Lizville all day. Oh yeah, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know Mr. Rogers and Sesame Street and all that. So. Mm -hmm. Well, that's awesome. um, but you know, comic books. I, I read anything I could get my hands on, mm -hmm. primarily DC. Okay. Um, but Batman, uh, of course. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. everything was Batman. Everything. Uh, Batman, World's Finest, Brave and the Bold. Mm -hmm. um, occasionally, I would pick up Captain America and Falcon, um, or things like that. But I was I was really always a DC guy. Oh, okay. Um, well, that's cool. Um, when did you get your start in comics? We're about the same age, so I'm guessing somewhere in the mid-90s. Um, I started working professionally as an illustrator in 1990 uh, when I left school. Okay. Uh, I went to the uh, Kubert School, the Joe Kubert oh, School cool. of Cartoon and Graphic cool. Arts. Oh, yeah. Um, and, you know, at the time, it was really the only kind of show, kind of school out there to really get you into the illustration field, mm -hmm. into comics and animation and that kind of thing. Uh, and I started working for TSR on Dungeons and Dragons licensing oh. and, and modules and things like that. And just doing whatever would pay the bills as, um, you know, as it came along. The first comic job that came along mm -hmm. was for Innovation Studios working on Dark Shadows. Oh, nice. Um, and, uh, and then I went over to doing Quantum Leap. Um, you know, so I've I've always been familiar with doing licensed work. Okay. Uh, you know, when you when you do something like you know, when I was doing Quantum Leap, mm -hmm. everything that we did had to go through the actors. You know, oh, they had really? to approve their license, their their likeness, and and everything. And uh, um, so it's a little bit different than say doing Batman. Yeah. Um, because you've got you know an, an extra step in there, mm -hmm. but um. Uh, since since 1990, I've worked on and off in comics and licensing and and toy design and all kinds of different things. Well, that's kind of cool. Um, with a lot of the younger talent, as it were, even the the amateur younger talent we have in our fandom, um, most are going full digital nowadays. Um, and you still do most of your art by hand. But yes. do you feel that the hand on art looks better reprinted? Is it is it a reason that you stay there, or is it just uh, well, for one thing, I'm an old I'm an old man, <laughs> so and this is the way I learn, you know, to do things. Yeah. And all you all you kids can get off my lawn. Yes, get um, off my lawn. You take your digital <laughs> tablets with you. I think when when we were in art school, we were in this weird middle gray period, mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, where if we had been in school like. Three years later, four, three or four years later, we would have started training to do computer work. But at mm -hmm. that time, everything was still digital. Right. You know, we were taught paste up. When I say paste up, I don't mean you control X and control C and no. control V. No, it's, it's, I mean it's, getting out rubber cement, rubber cement and, and making stats and, and oh. right and amber lith and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, we were trained to do that kind of stuff. So it's what I know. Mm -hmm. But beyond that. With digital, I feel it feels so sterile yeah, to me. I give it. I, have the same um, I can't get my hands dirty. You know, I can't play with the materials and learn what they do. Everything is just a click of a button. And yeah, and line. Uh, and that's great for some people, but it's it's just I can't. I don't feel it. Yeah, I mean, so it doesn't mean anything to me. You know, occasionally I will do uh, digital coloring mm -hmm. uh, for the sake of speed, or if there's a particular look that I want or whatever, but otherwise 
uh, I'm always going to want to get my hands dirty. Yeah. And besides that, when you do digital art, yeah. you don't have an original to sell. Right, like this one here, which uh, my good friends got me from uh, Tony Fleece, which is an actual page of art that he did from the Rainbow Dash one-off. Yeah. With the Sonic Green Boom that I have tattooed to my chest. Right. <laughs> and if you take a really good look at this, you can look at the line weight. You can see how he used line weight to give close to back and how that all works from page to page and how the page is read before it goes to the colorist and where he made his changes and where it's a little bit better, a little bit worse, depending on how he made his changes. So it's really cool to see the actual physical art to see what the artist was thinking when right. he did his art instead of just having click, paste, click, paste, click, paste. Unless you had the computer program, you wouldn't know what he was doing. Right. Yes. Yeah, you know, I mean, there's there's some people out there that do amazing digital work. Uh huh. Um, but I, you know, I can appreciate it, but it's just it's just not for me. I right. want to I want to feel the brush in my hand. I want to feel the reaction to it. You know. Absolutely. Um, so I was always, I was me. always the same way. I loved a number two pencil and you know a number three in an inkwell and number three brush. That's why how I did my stuff. Um. We all know your love of the 60s Batman TV show, because it's all for your art. Everywhere. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, but who are some of your favorite comic characters that are not Batman? And why is that? Um, that are not Batman. Yeah, not Batman. Um, <clears throat> well, getting out of the Batman group, mm -hmm. villains and sub-characters and everything else like that, um, I've always liked Hawkman. Mm -hmm. I've always liked Green Arrow. Green Arrow's kind of cheating because he's just a green Batman. True. Um, uh, but um, I think I, I also always loved Hawkman and Green Arrow together because one was extremely conservative, one was extremely liberal, mm -hmm. um, and they never got along. And it was a really neat dynamic. Uh -huh. um, I Sorry. liked, I, I loved the new Teen Titans. Oh, the new Teen Titans was awesome. They should never yeah. have canceled that show. Ever. Oh, even I'm, I'm talking way before then. I know that. The, I mean, yeah. the the new one with the chibi versions of them, that's blue. But the first one they did. <laughs> the first one, they never should have stopped doing that. That was such an awesome show. And well, they... apparently, there is a... I don't know what characters are involved, yeah. but there is... Uh, the license has been sold to do a Titans live-action television series. <gasps> oh, oh, my goodness. Um, all I know is nice. that they have claimed Nightwing will be involved. <gasps> How that's going to work out, I don't know. I don't know, um, but they also seem to be very willy nilly with their shows, show and movie continuities. Uh huh. Um, like Arrow and Flash are tying together. Right. They're the same universe. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a Supergirl show that is in the works. Ooh, that's kind of cool. They have not. They have not come out and stated if it's in this same universe. They're kind of dancing around that answer. Yes, I'm showing so, I'm showing off know. your Supergirl here at that Wonder Woman and is is doting on. <laughs> so, that was kind of cool. Ah. Yes, that piece. Um, <laughs> the so in working closely with Katie, um, how much back and forth goes between you two when you're uh, before you set the pencil to paper? I mean, I'm sure she sends you a script and then do you have any banter with that? Can you send back saying, well, I can't really draw that. What if we draw this? Um, oh, yeah. Things like They'll that. Do... How much that goes on before you actually set the pencil to paper? We do that. Uh, we actually do a good bit of banter while she is writing. Mm -hmm. She'll have an idea. What it, will this work? Um, how will we do this visually? That kind of thing. Um, but for the most part, as far as the story goes, you know, she, she does her thing. And I get the script from our editor. Okay. The final script, he'll do any changes or whatever. He sends me the final script. Mm -hmm. And then I start going from there. And if I have any questions or any ideas, I'll bounce them off of her. Hey, in this panel it says blah, blah, blah. What if we did blah, blah, blah? Okay, yeah, that works. You know, our we are texting with each other constantly. Oh, nice. Uh, you know, uh, various ideas and, and gags and whatever. <clears throat> A lot of people ask me about... Um, you know, the background bag, background gags that I've become famous yeah. slash infamous for. Mm -hmm. um, and some of those, she will suggest the majority of them are, are mine. It's just my reaction to whatever is going on in the scene or mm -hmm. whatever. 
Um, and every once in a while, I'll, I'll come up with an idea and I'll send something to her. What if I did this? And she'll answer, I dare you. I dare you. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so um, we actually do quite a bit of, of back and forth. Oh, um, yeah, that's, that's awesome. A lot of, some people have asked me to ask you. It's like, how many of those background things can you put in one page? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and you know it's weird? I've always done that. Mm -hmm. uh, if you were to go back and look in my old Quantum Leap comic books, you'll find it there. Yeah. Um, I think I picked that up from an artist named Steve Rude. Oh, Rude uh, Dude? Used to I do met Nexus. him once. Yeah. Rude. And he did, his backgrounds are incredible. Yeah, his to, backgrounds are nuts. just look through things, the details and everything that he does. And I, I think that's where I soaked that up from. Yeah, I think I met Rude Dude in like 89 at some convention. Yeah, that was that was really part of his heyday. That yeah, was when Nexus that, was really when Nexus was huge. Yeah. But uh yeah, really good, good guy, good guy. Um have you ever had to redraw a whole page just because it didn't feel right with the script? Um I have gone in and changed things. I'll draw things and I'm like that doesn't have enough movement or it doesn't have enough impact for what the scene is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. um, but we have had pages. I have had entire pages that we have had to redraw Ooh. due to editorial changes. Ooh, okay. um, case in point, uh, one example is way back in issue two. Mm -hmm. uh, if you remember in the Return of the Chrysalis arc, right. uh, at one point they are going through the old Diamond Dog mines. Right. Some abandoned diamond dog mines, and they come across Jim the Cape Troll. Okay. Uh, which, for the fans out there that don't know, a lot of a lot of people thought that we were making fun of bronies. Oh, with really? The Cape Troll. A lot of people did. That was the very first thing that came out. No way. They're making fun of the fans. No. No. We way. were making fun of the director of the show. <laughs> Jim. That's Big Jim. Big Jim. Okay. Yes. Uh, that's Big Jim Miller, the co-director of the show. That's what that was based on. Okay. Uh, that's why we called him Jim. Uh, it was just to poke at him. Um, but yes. Hasbro did not like the troll. Okay. Unfortunately, Hasbro did not speak up until it was time to go to print. Oh, no. They didn't say anything during the script. They didn't say anything during pencils. They didn't say anything until, until colors were done. Wow. And they said he's far too human. He's got to be changed. And I was like... Too it's late. too late. Too late. You know. We're going to press tomorrow. And <clears throat> we had to do some minor changes to him. I did a couple of minor changes, mm -hmm. but otherwise he's pretty much the way you think he's going to be. Yeah. Um, in the Reflections arc, mm -hmm. there were entire pages that I had to redraw. The wow. entire page. Whoa. I had to abandon the page. Abandon page. Completely redraw it. So there are certain parts of the first book mm -hmm. in that. That have two different pages. Mm. Uh, wow. We actually ended up doing a lot of changes in that book due to editorial changes from Hasbro, mm -hmm. and the, the story actually changed dramatically from what it originally was going to be. And I had to do I do a lot of redrawing mm. there. Wow. So it happens, you know. Every once in a while, something will come up. <clears throat> you know, I'll do some changes myself because I don't like the the flow of the page, uh -huh. but. Um, you know, then there's editorial changes that come down the line. You can't do this. You can't do that. Yeah. Whatever. Or, or they want to stick a toy in there or something for selling points. Yeah. Or yeah. We've had that too. Um, uh, in the Big Mac arc, uh -huh. um, uh, you see uh, in one issue, Fleetfoot gets a bump on the head. Yes. And dreams this whole alternate life with, awesome. with Big Mac. Yes. And I, in the following uh, issue, uh -huh. T-Love does the same thing. Yes. She bumps her head and doesn't. Hasbro requested T Love specifically. Really? Yeah. Yes. And here, they were putting out a the, book yeah. with a T Love toy. Oh, okay. And they wanted T Love in the book uh -huh. to get her a little bit more exposure. Yeah. And here's the uh, here's the Comics World cover of that page, which is uh, which was actually used for the Comics World specific cover for IDW. Can yeah. you read my mind? Beautiful page. <clears throat> Thank but, you. Uh, yeah. So I've got my entire box of comics here. So if you're talking about something, I'm just going to yank it out. <laughs> Show it to everybody because i got all my comics, all of them. Um, I'm a comic geek. Uh, I, you all know that. So I've got them all right here. We can talk about anything we got in the box. Um, 
were you active in comics during the 1980s, quote unquote, black and white glut that came after the success of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Are we so? I remember, I remember when Ninja Turtles, the original book, hit the stands. Yes. Um, because I remember looking at it thinking, "What is this, Shinola? Uh huh. You know what? What is this? I was like, "This is stupid." Okay. You know, if I could go back and buy it, I, I would. Um, but I just, it was meant to be a parody <clears throat> of how dark comics were becoming. Mm -hmm. And if you look at it, uh, what a lot of people don't know is, uh, Shredder dies. I think oh, in like the he, very first story. Yeah, he dies violently. Yeah, Absolutely. it was a very, very violent book, very dark book, and it was meant to be a parody of what comics were becoming, Yeah, uh, thanks to Dark Knight and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I remember when all of those things came about, it was kind of a second underground movement in comics. You know, uh, the underground books of the 70s had mm -hmm. kind of faded away, you know, the, the Robert Crumb stuff and, yeah. and all of that. And the 80s had its own little underground period. Mm -hmm. With Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Omaha the Cat and Dancer, Dancer and, and Samurai Penguin and Samurai and Penguin and Space and, Beaver and, uh, and yeah, on, on, on. Cherry Pop Tart and all those kind of things oh, yeah. that and um, I think <clears throat> that that it actually helped a lot of comic book companies get off the ground. Mm -hmm. You know, DC and Marvel had the market. Oh yeah. You know, uh, the only other option was Archie. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, in the, in the late 80s, in the mid 80s, all these underground little people right. started coming out of the woodwork. And then in the late 80s, they started to get organized and actually put out companies. Yeah, we wouldn't have you know, Fantagraphics books. And, right, Fantagraphics and, yeah. and Dark Horse and all this kind of stuff. Um, but oh, yeah, I, I, you know, I was, I remember standing at the comic shop at Funland Park in Decatur, Alabama. Mm -hmm. um, and. Looking at Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles on the shelf, the very first one. Yeah, so I've, I've got issue three. Can't <laughs> find a one, but I got number three. Um, and weird because they're different size. They're not a comic book size. They're actually different. They're sort right. of magazine size, which is hard yeah, to kind of like the uh, doesn't fit in a box. <laughs> right, kind of like the old uh, the original Elf Quest. Yes, the original yeah, Elf Quest. They were just an odd size. It's weird. So. Um, I'm I'm gonna go on to this one. I mean, we touched on it earlier, but. In taking up the MLP comic yourself, you know, when you first started, how much work was there in getting the characters drawn, quote-unquote, correct um, from Hasbro's point of view? Um, did they do a lot of changes from your original sketch ideas? Extremely little. Really? Um, and what was interesting is when we first got the job, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I told Hasbro, I don't want to draw it like the show. Right. And they were like, well, what do you mean? And I said, you know, if you do, if you want it to look exactly like the show, then just do some screen grabs, because yeah. I'm not interested. You know, mm -hmm. if I have to draw it, uh, you know, exactly the same, it kind of takes out any inspiration for me, any any artistic license for me. Mm -hmm. And you know, I sent them a sample page, and I said I want it to look like a comic book. This, we're doing a comic. Let's let's you know take advantage book, yeah. of medium. And I I sent them a sample page of what I wanted the book to look like. And they were like, okay, you know, we like this. We understand what you want to do. Go ahead. And that was really about it. Um, there was very little, um, you know, the most, the, the things that they really were meticulous about, they were like, you know, the, the cutie marks have to be exact. Okay. Yeah. Of you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. They've got to be, you know, they, those have to be dead on. And every once in a while they will, they will specify, yeah. Something to tie into the show or right, whatever, right? Yeah, use this character because it's coming up in like four episodes or whatever. Exactly. Yeah, um, that's cool. Um, con sketches. I'm gonna put up a couple of your con sketches here because they're freaking hilarious. Oh, I love these <laughs> things. Um, like con sketch Luna. Haha, ha, the fines have been doubled. Um, and it, oh, I know the one you're talking about. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, you were pretty dang prolific with these things. Um, and they're always a gas. They're always funny. You're always putting them up on Twitter when you're at a con. And I, I usually yank, grab them all because they're, they're great. What has, was the weirdest request for a mini con sketch? Wow. Um, 
every once in a while, I will turn one down. Somebody will come up with something a little too randy uh-huh. or a little too graphic, okay. and I'm not going to do that. No, of course. Um, yeah. uh, I had one. Somebody wanted me to do Celestia carrying machine guns. Carrying what? Machine guns. Machine like, guns. Uh, oh, okay. And I just felt a little off about it. I was like, I don't know. I don't know. Do I don't know. Now, Luna, uh, maybe. But, but I rarely, for the most part, um, I don't get too many off too many off requests. There was one Katie got one time. Hmm. And um, a guy wanted Luna in a Nazi SS officer's uniform. No, no, no. And she was like, uh, no. No, no. And no. her reaction was so negative, he didn't ask me. Yeah. Because I think he just got the, yeah, the, the idea of, like, that. okay – this is not something that's kosher. No, but, it's um, not kosher. <laughs> yeah. Now, I've gotten some wild requests. The pony ones, for the most part, aren't too bad. Yeah. Well, um, I think people realize, you know, they can't go They can't go too, too far. Yeah. You, like this um, one with Spike, with Rarity looking down at him, the jewel that's on her chest and says, my eyes are up here. There's a jewel there. That's what he's looking at. Right. Right. <laughs> and that, that's that's about as far as, as, as I'm going to go. As that was about as grandy as I'll go. Yeah. Um, uh, there was one somebody somebody wanted the reverse of that with Spike making a comment about her cutie mark. Oh, so it could be like you know a butt gag, and oh. I was like, mm. I, I I did it because mm. I've managed to pull it off without it being okay too randy. Okay. It was more yeah. stupid, silly, stupid. but it was a hard one to do. It was a hard one to come up to get past that to get over that hurdle yes. to get past the happy valley. Yes, the, you know, the challenge of the artist. Yes, Just being funny. All uh, I think I I like to play with a lot of other artists when we get together. One of the first mm-hmm. things I'll ask is, "What's the stupidest request you've ever gotten, or what's mm-hmm. the worst request you've ever gotten?" And my worst request to date is a guy wanted. I can't tell the whole story okay. behind what he wanted, okay. but it boiled down to he wanted a picture of Burgess Meredith naked. Ooh, ooh, <laughs> and I was like, I think no. I just. Drawing no, the line. No, I think I found. I think I found my limit. I found the limit. So yes, yeah, I found the limit. Um, uh, yeah, and so. the one I really like that I've seen lately was the one where I think you did Celestia and Katie did. No, you did Luna and Katie did Celestia, and they were playing cards. And yes, and Tiberius was trying to give Luna a bunch of aces under the table. Right. Um, that kind of thing w- was really neat because they asked. They had Katie do Celestia on half the page and came mm-hmm. to me and asked, you know. Will you do Luna on this half? And that that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, and at conventions, you know, like the the little black and white sketches, I do as many of those as I can pack into a day. Yeah. You know, they're ten bucks. Whatever kind of a head sketch. Yeah, they're great. Come up, I want Scootaloo or I want mm-hmm. Sweetie Belle or whatever, and I, and, I draw and whatever. I'm always too late because I'm always off doing something for the convention. By the time <laughs> I get to you, you're completely booked for the day. And it's like, yeah, they, it. it doesn't matter. That's ten bucks. I can't take another one. And it's like, um. The, like the bigger ones, like the grayscale ones yeah. and the color ones and things like that, I can only do, I can only, it depends on the show, how busy the show is, yeah. but at most I can take two or three a day because they're oh, yeah. very they're, time consuming. Yeah, very time consuming. And if the show is busy, I can't work, at them, work on them at the show. No, I have, you have to, to take work them on back the hotel to the hotel. Room, yeah. so. the, uh, I love this one, which is uh, Celestia and Luna with Luna going, Mom will always like you best. I love that one. was one of my favorites. I, I drew that, that on one. a plane on the way to a convention. <laughs> but that needs to be a T-shirt. I, I really does. I love it. <laughs> I love that piece. Um, okay, let's go into your latest, greatest, awesome arc, which is Good King Sombra. Good King Sombra arc was really, really awesome. I loved it. Thank you. Um, let me get the art up because it's just really, really cool. So there's a, a beautiful piece from that with uh, Celestia lamenting about about him. Um, not only was the storytelling great, but the art seemed to like jump up off the page and take you by, by the collar and lead you along, and it was awesome. Did you have more time to work on this one to do all this intricate, awesome artwork, or did does this particular story just reach out and grab you and say, it needs to be drawn this way, god dang it? I think it was more the latter. Um, okay. We actually Katie actually had had the idea for that story for a long time. Mm-hmm. And so you know, we knew the way certain things wanted to look ahead of time. Um, 
and we just were so deep into the into the idea of the story that I think it just kind of took over in in the artwork. Yeah. Um, like I said, that was the one where we actually had to do a lot of changes in the middle of the story itself. Oh, wow. Yeah. So the story is not what we originally meant it to be. <gasps> and of course, um, we can't know that. Right. We can't know what it was supposed to be. Um, I will say there was, um, like, a, it, in issue 17, that was the start of the four issues of the four issue arc, mm -hmm. uh, where we go back in time and we meet Star Swirl. Right. Which I was very excited about to actually establish a character that had barely even been spoken oh, of. Oh, yeah. Barely scratched the surface of okay. character. And I was nervous that Hasbro, they were nervous about Star Swirl appearing. Mm -hmm. They were like, oh, well, okay. And um, I didn't like the idea of him being this Merlin yeah. dramatic Gandalf type. I wanted him a little bit more goofy. Yeah, more like the Merlin from Disney Sword, Sword of the Stone. Stone. Right. right. Um, I wanted him to be um, older. Mm -hmm. If you look at him, he's got knock knees. He's mm -hmm. very... Uh, sunken in his face. I wanted him to be kind of like Granny Smith. I wanted an right. older character. Mm -hmm. But when we first did the story in the flashbacks, it was so far back, Star Swirl was actually a young man. Wow. And he looked radically different. He looked more like Doctor Strange. Mm. Wow. And Celestia was more like like cadence-sized. She mm. was much younger. Yeah. And Hasbro said, no, you can't do that. Okay. Celestia has to look like Celestia, period. Right. Uh, so that was, you know, some of the big changes that we did. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of other dictations came down in the middle of that, in the middle of working on that book that said, no, you can't do this, you have to go this. Mm -hmm. You have to do this. So it, it did change the story radically. Mm -hmm. And the the story has, that that's one of the stories that fans either love or hate. There's no middle ground, it seems. Yeah. Most people um, either love it or hate it. I know that my co my co star here, Screwball, completely loves and adores that story. <laughs> I love Excellent. the hell out of it. <laughs> hey, PG show, Thank you. watch it. Oh, the heck Thank out you. of it. Because <laughs> I've got I've got the the black and white of the spread is over my shoulder right now, and it's just gorgeous. I know the color is even better, but the black and white just has this beautiful essence to it. I didn't, I wanted to use that one. Which page? The black and white spread of the the two at night with all of the hanging. Uh, oh, in the in the garden. In the yes. Garden. Yes. Yes. Gorgeous, gorgeous piece. I, when I opened yep. the book and went, I'm going to be here about for about ten minutes on these two <laughs> pages, and I don't care. It's awesome. I do. Yeah, that was um, it. That that story meant a lot to us. Yes. You know, we were upset with the changes that we had to make. Mm -hmm. We were still happy with the book when it was done, mm -hmm. but it was like, you know, we looked at each other and we're like, well, we like this, but it's not what we set out to do. Yeah. Well, well hopefully uh, someday we can see that. Hopefully. 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 I've, like I said, I've got, I've got the original art <gasps> still and, and, you know, there's eventually things will be shown. Yes. That, I would that love, love to see that the, someday. If you the upper it. overlord said, no, you can't do that. Darn it. So. <laughs> which, 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 which original art was it again? Sorry. Yes. The original art of the changes that he didn't have to make. Oh honestly. man, if yeah. you ever yeah, do bring different. that out, yeah. I'm gonna save up all the money I can. I want to buy those. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so no, right now, no. right now, I'm gonna throw it to my good friend and co-host Screwball at the moment because he has a wonderful question that he wants to ask of you of the King Sombra. So, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna throw it to Screwball right now. Go bed. Yeah, I, I I'm a huge Sombra fan, and uh, and I don't know if this was asked of you before, but uh, I think I've actually asked you this, but I can't quite remember. What do you think would make a good voice for Good King Sombra? Who? Pierce Brosnan. Pierce oh, Brosnan. Yeah. Yes. Pierce Brosnan. There you go. Uh, see that. We actually worked this out while we were working on the book. Because I wanted him to be somebody that was very charming, but at the same time had a had a timber, a strength to his voice. Um, and I'm a big Bond fan as well, so I would mm -hmm. I would say Pierce Brosnan, or if I could go back in time and get like the '70s Roger Moore. Oh yeah, the '70s Roger Moore. Ooh. You know, he's got to have that. Yeah, don't have that. That. Oh, and now that's all I can hear. Oh, right. Yeah, <laughs> that's so awesome. good. Awesome. And it also has to be. It also has to be something that contrasts against what we know as Sombra from the show. That yeah, you know, that deep timber that Big Jim Miller yeah. did for his voice. 
you know, it can't be, it's got to be something more sophisticated. Yeah. You know, um, and at the same time, you know, working on that, uh, when I did uh, Star Swirl, Mm -hmm. you know, again, you know, this is an actor who's been gone a long time, but if I could go back in time and get Paul Lind to to do Star Swirl. Somebody that was, you know, yeah. hey Sammy. <laughs> Somebody that was a little goofy. A little goofy. Yeah. <clears throat> that went against what Star Swirl yeah. actually was. This very strong wizard. Um, mm-hmm. I like the idea of something that contrasts with what he is. Yeah. You know, this very intelligent, very all-knowing wizard. Yeah. That's actually kind of goofy. Paul you know, Lynn was amazing. Paul so, Lynn was an amazing comedian. If you yeah, guys if, go, go go on YouTube and find up some Paul Lynn stuff and go find watch some it. Paul Lynn, find some old uh, Hollywood Squares. Hollywood clips. Squares. Oh, he was awesome on Hollywood Squares. Be prepared to pee some yourself a little. Thing. Yes, because it's um, freaking hilarious. But uh, since he's gone, I, I'd get John Noble to oh, do Star Wars. John Noble. Yeah. So uh, we we've always been bannering back in here whether it's going to be Patrick Stewart or Ian McKellen. <laughs> so we banner that back and forth to find out who they're going to get as a guest voice when they actually bring Star Swirl to the show. So <laughs> they, they will. No <laughs> they will. They've they've used him in season four enough. He's been in the comics enough. He will be in the show at some, some point. Season five or six, we don't know, but I happen. wouldn't be surprised. I would be surprised. Be surprised. Um so moving on. Uh you love to do these awesome, awesome covers. Um here is the Celestia Fights Herself cover. Um which is actually one of the favorite pieces that I've done. Oh, I've actually, um, I've had that piece up for sale yeah. since I did it, but the more I look at it, the more I think I'm going to end up keeping it. Yeah. Um, so you have the black I've only, and whites? Yeah. I've got the original, the original art. The only other piece that I've ever kept from mm-hmm. the book for myself was the, the showdown between Chrysalis and Twilight. Oh, yeah. That one was awesome. Um, that page I kept that, for that, me. That is and like... Katie got the defeat page, okay. which I call the quickening. You know, mm-hmm. where Twilight's all glowing. <laughs> <So, laughs> you know. Yes. And if you guys don't know what the quickening is, quickening is, go look it up. Because it's yes. from one of the best movies ever. Watch the first movie watch and the, go no further. Yeah, go no further. First movie. Don't watch any no, others. No. None of the others. It never happened. Yes. The TV show never happened. Okay. Just go watch the yeah. first movie and call it good. Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so this cover, not only that, but I think I have the uh, Rarity, Rarity Gets Her Groove cover. There it is. Rarity Gets just groovy. I mean, look at this thing. Yep. It's so it's, it's so different than anything that's on the newsstand, right? Just wonderful stuff. How long does it take you to go from concept to final cover? Um, depends. Um, <clears throat> with the Rarity cover... I knew I wanted something that looked like the old uh, 60s San Francisco rock posters. Right. Um, you know, just the term groovy. You got to yeah. go with that. Yeah, yeah that. Um, so I sent a couple of ideas to to our editor. I usually send like two or three sketches, and he'll pick one, um, and I go from there. Mm-hmm. You know, and when I was doing that, I just I got printouts of the old uh, Fillmore concert posters from mm-hmm. the 60s San Francisco mm-hmm. posters and just laid them all over my desk okay so I couldn't help but just soak in that yeah. look you know? yes um, but um, yeah usually uh, usually I'll send in about two or three ideas for a cover and we'll debate on what's the best idea uh, I've got one coming up and I don't know if they've shown it yet or not mm-hmm. online or anything but I've got a Norman Rockwell tribute no we haven't seen that yet um there's a cover coming out. Um, it's just Spike uh, sitting in front of an easel. You know, you've seen the ones right. of uh, Norman yeah. Rockwell where he's doing yes. his self-portrait or whatever. There was one that Norman Rockwell did where he's staring at a blank cover, mm-hmm. at a blank canvas, with a note of the deadline looming. Okay. And I, I did that, and it's it's Spike staring at an empty IDW My Little Pony cover, <laughs> wondering what to draw for the cover. So, <laughs> you know. That's awesome. Because they keep they keep giving these you know blank covers so you guys can sketch on them at conventions. Uh, yes, you know? yes, <laughs> yeah. And, and that, is nice actually, diet. that is actually the most brilliant thing I've ever seen in comics. It's like, yeah, oh, I'm yeah. gonna buy a third cover because I can take this to the to the show and get my favorite artist to sketch an actual cover for me. Yep, that is crazy, awesomely intelligent. That wow, right? 
I've got like five yeah, it is it is a really smart thing. Yeah. Um, and thankfully for me, mm-hmm. IDW's cover stock is the best to draw on of all the companies. Yeah. So. Well, well, they're smart enough to know that if they're going to bring this and somebody's going to draw on it, then it better be pretty good paper. Yes. You know, and and artists, even me, um, love art, particular paper. You know, I have a particular paper I go to university yep. art and I buy, and that's what I love. And no other paper will do. So, but that's just the way. Yep. It is. I'm the same way. Yeah. Um, let's see. Next, um, which one of you? came up with the genius idea to give Luna a pet. Not only to give her a pet, but he's, she's, he's a possum called Tiberius. And that, that actually just, was brilliance. <laughs> that actually was truly both of us. You know, you asked earlier about how much back and forth there yeah. was, and this is a perfect example, because um, that truly was a collaborative effort. Right. We both knew we wanted to give Luna a pet uh-huh. because she didn't have one. Right. Um, and, uh, I immediately started fighting for a possum. Mm -hmm. We knew it, it had to be a nocturnal animal. Right. And, um, you know, everybody, everybody's first thought is a bat, which is exactly why I didn't do that. No, bats are like, Um, okay, yeah, wow. That's too typical. typical. It's got to be something a little bit weird. Yeah. Luna's a little bit weird, so it's got to be something kind of offbeat. And, uh, I had just fostered a possum. My wife and I fostered a possum. Okay. Um, from a rescue. And so I was like, this possum was adorable. Let's do an opossum. Katie was not quite sold on an opossum. Okay. She first wanted to give Luna a pet rock. Oh, no. No. And we were talking with Megan McCarthy. Uh-huh. And we, were, we told her the idea. And we were like, and this is before Maud showed up yeah. on the show. And yeah. she said, not a rock. We have plans for a rock. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> And we're like, okay. Um, so we settled on a, on, a, on a possum, and then we were at a show trying to think up names, and Katie just turned to me, and she went, Tiberius. It was just that simple. It just came out of her, Tiberius. That's, that's crazy. If anybody doesn't know the meaning of Tiberius in space, go look it up. <laughs> I mean, come on. And Katie it, and I are both big Trek fans. Yes, you know, it, it, it's like James, um, James Tiberius Kirk. Right. And, you know, Tiberius was a a warmonger, yes. uh, not not Kirk, but the actual Tiberius. Yes. So it, it carries this big royal mm-hmm. air, yes. like Luna has, mm-hmm. but it's this goofy little creature, yeah. and it was just a neat little mix. Yes. Um, so that was that was one of our favorite things to do yes. in the comic was was in the, back, in the background the where he like holds up the strawberry, and I was like, that's funny. Yes. <laughs> A great right. meme came out of that. One of my yes. favorite memes. I'm um, not going to say it on the air. So. No. Screwball. You there, buddy? Yo, yo, yo. You got another question? Yes, I do, actually. <laughs> um, this one, Andy, is uh, what was the hardest piece to draw slash paint in any of the comics thus far? That's, um... I'm thinking this one. I'll s- both, both biceps yelling. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say that the most time-consuming was the garden scene in Reflections. Oh, yeah. Uh, the big the big garden scene. That took much longer than I thought it was going to. Mm-hmm. Um, it's such a beautiful piece, though. <laughs> yeah, and I, I really wanted, you know, really wanted it to have a big impact, so it took a long time to do. Um, I don't know if anything that's been too difficult. Uh, every once in a while, I will come up with a layout where I kind of corner myself. Mm-hmm. Um... But there's nothing. There's nothing that's been too hard to do. Um, not that I can think of. That was actually, like I said. That was the most time-consuming one. Of course, well, that, of course. Well, then there's the uh, the day and night cover, which had a lot of things going on. In. Well, there's, uh, now there's, there's a little story behind that one. Okay. Um, the day and night cover, the the Celestia Luna cover, which was issue five, and. Um, to give you an idea of the contrast between traditional art and digital art, you know, that's it's all traditional art. The background is done with an airbrush. Um, an actual good old metal mechanical airbrush and mm-hmm. air compressor and everything. And I was fighting deadline. The cover was due the next day. Mm-hmm. I was working on it. I was finishing it up. I was doing the sky behind the two characters. Okay. And it fades from blue into this kind of emerald color to mm-hmm. a purple color. Mm-hmm. And I'm working right in the middle of the page, and I'm, I'm just about done. I'm maybe 
maybe an hour away from being done with this cover, and my airbrush clogged and spit. So this big clump of paint oh, no. came out in the middle of the sky. Oh. Now my wife can tell you. My <laughs> wife has seen me. She's seen me cry. She's seen oh. me angry. She's seen me happy. She's, she's like, I've never seen you that angry. I threw the artwork. I had an exacto blade in one hand. I threw it, stuck it in the wall. Oh. <laughs> it just went across the room. I was, I was in a rage. Oh. Oh. Um, and then I looked. After about an hour, it took about an hour to calm yeah. down. I went and screamed into a pillow. It was like the most, yeah. most cartoon 30 Rock moment, you know. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I looked at it again. Here's this big blotch in the middle of the sky. Right. And I was like, you know what? Let's do it again. So I made the airbrush do matching splotches oh. up the middle of the page. And I turned it into an effect. Nice. Oh. That, kids, is what we call a happy accident. Yes. But, you know, when you're doing that digitally, you can press the back key. Yeah, you can't do that. When you're doing it with an airbrush, right, when you're doing it with an airbrush, you then scream into a pillow and throw an X-Acto blade. (laughs) Was that a parquet? It's a Sotar. A Sotar. I've never used a Sotar, but my Pachés would clog whenever the heck they wanted to. Oh, yeah. Uh, I've had Sotars, Pachés, Badgers. I've, I've gone through... Yeah, all I, of them. I've given it up. I tried, tried, tried. I gave it up. Yeah, I wanted to use them. One thing I want to learn is actually pinstripe, because that looks like awesome things to do. Pinstripe. That's um, pinstripe. If you if you're on Reddit at all, yeah. There's a subreddit called uh, oh, it just left my pen penmanship porn. Ooh, wow. Ooh. And it's watching people with calligraphy pens. And wow. pinstripe brushes and things like that, and to yeah. see these people do this, it is amazing. It, is it looks amazing. like magic. Amazing. So. Um, okay, last question before we go to question and answer, or we'll go to conventions. So, last question: You've had tremendous success with the MLB title. In fact, you outsold Batman one one year, one month. Yep. And I'm sure that this has opened many opportunities and doors for you with other publishers, but is there one character or title you really want to draw for? You know, it used to be, I would say, Batman. Okay. Um, the changes that DC has made, both creatively, great, pardon me, creatively. take two, yeah. creatively, creatively and editorially. Uh-huh. Edito- them changes that DC has made, I've, I've seen <laughs> our speech, I'm sorry. The changes that they've made, both behind the scenes and in and on stage, you know, with their books, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't like it. Okay. I don't like the new Fifty Two. I don't like the adult direction that it's taken. Mm-hmm. And I stopped reading DC. <gasps> I learned to read on DC, and I stopped it. I couldn't, I couldn't take the books anymore. I was getting angry with them. Wow. And I was like, I'm just gonna remember what I remember, and yeah, you know, I look at them because I can appreciate the work in them and everything, mm-hmm. but I don't like the stories. If I could do a classic Batman story, like a like a good old Silver Age Batman, seventies, eighties Batman, mm-hmm. or the Batman sixty six. Okay, yeah, that'd be that'd be it. That'd be it. That'd be cool. Um, but I try to get you know I try to get deep into whatever project I'm working on. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, luckily with MLP, you know I happened to like the show before I even oh, yeah. got the job, so that was a good start. Oh yeah. But yeah, uh, yeah, I, I'd I'd say a classic Batman or Batman sixty six would be that'd be the thing cool that would be it awesome by the way dusty yes sir you're getting echoes i'm getting echoes again echo 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 oh, echo, echo 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 well, <laughs> there's nothing i'm going to be able, able to do about it at this point so I, broadcasting do you deep from inside the belly of a sperm whale yeah um hopefully it's not that bad it, there was a little bit of echo beginning when we did our test but hopefully it's not getting any worse so as long as it's okay with people, I'll continue on. Um, there's nothing I can really do about it at this point. We'll have to do some testing later on. And, and if it gets too bad, let me know, all right? So with that, we are, I don't have a commercial set up because all of my commercials were on the other channel. All of my, oh. all of my 
my sponsorships, all of my, are gone. All of them. I'm, I'm trying to get a couple Really? Times. Yeah. Well, I, I know I got them, but you know, this is a new thing. I've got a couple in the works, but I don't have a commercial. Uh -huh. So we're going to skip commercial, because we did, had a wonderful question and answer with, with Andy. So we're a little bit over anyway. So we're going to go straight into conventions. So, uh, coming up, BabsCon, April 3rd to 5th, 2015, guests John Delancey, Kathy Westlock, Tara Strong, Dan Ingram, Stephan Andrews, Claire and Ian Corlett, Brian and Brenna Drummond, and now Andrea Linden is also going to be there. Um, you don't want to miss this one. You don't. Um, they're also doing the voiceover contest, the voice equestria again, where Tara Strong brings you up there and throws you all these questions to make funny voices. So if you want in on that, make sure you get a audition tape, which would be a YouTube video, and then send that to the website so they can see it. Everfree Northwest is coming up May 29th to 31st. We know they have John Delancey, Nicole Oliver, and Tavis St. Germain. Um, one thing I'm going to say about BabsCon is John Delancey can't be there. I'm sorry John Delancey can't be there because he's in a play. So we're going to say that. So you can see him at Everfree Northwest, but he'll be there. Um, Nicole Oliver, Sam St. Germain. They haven't said a lot about what's going on with Everfree Northwest yet. So we're getting there, guys. You need to start get, coming up with some whatever's going on. You need to tell us. Um, and then uh, PonyCon NY. New York is coming up February 14th to 16th, Brooklyn, New York. Guest Ingrid Nilsson, that's Mod Pie. Daniel Ingram, Vincent Tong, who goes almost nowhere these days. And Andrew Libman will all be there. Um, that's going to be awesome. Tickets are on sale, so get your tickets soon because that show's coming up and they'll probably, at the door, cut off. will be soon. Um, so get your East Coast butt to PonyCon NY. Um, charity, charity work, straight from charity. Uh, Pixel and the Twilight Sparkle Secret Ship Tech Game people put us to 826 National Student Writing Workshops because writing fan fiction usually gets you into writing books because writing fan fiction teaches you how to write. And if you like to write fan fiction, then that's what you should do, learn how to write. Um, so they had, let's do this. We actually reached 500 bits with a save from Purple Tinker herself. Thank you, PT, for saving us on that. We made our 500-bit goal. So with that, I've got a pile of stuff over here, which is, of course, this pile, a black blind bag of rarity, which is my spur, you may have. Two, not count one, but two boxes of my smarties. Thank you, Margin Line, for that. Um, this DVD, Keys of Friendship, will go to you. This, because it's about reading and writing, I've got three, count them, three comics right here. We've got... The 2013 Annual Equestria Girls with uh, Tony Fleece art. We've got uh, number 12, Cook Price Breckle, which is, has the Sipsy cover artwork. So that's one, two. And also, one, I think one of my favorite covers, which is uh, Cook Price Breckle number 17 with the Amy Memberson Star Swirl Bearded Cover with Trixie. Those three will also go to you. And whatever I've got left over in the special secret ship thick folder card games from all of the different conventions. So you get those six cards. But not only that, because we hit 500 bills, you will also get a copy of the game straight from Twilight Sparkle's secret ship thick folders, secret lair in the Pacific Northwest. But all of the con cards that they have that I don't have, you'll also get. So that will come to the person whose name I pull out of this cowboy hat. Right, you know, here's the name, the name, the name is Phoenix Core. Phoenix Core, you are a wonderful supporter of the show, a wonderful supporter of our charities. Thank you very much once again. You win that pile of stuff, so send me your address again at dusty at manlyburning.com, and I will send that stuff to you and get the stuff from Twilight Sparkle Seat. Ship the folder people also send to you. So that's that. Um, so we're going to move forward to Andy's charity. And for Andy's charity, um, we sort of got our heads together, especially because of what's happened over the last couple of days, actually a couple of weeks, because Katie Cook actually lost a pet um, a couple of weeks ago. And then we lost Bonsai. And you guys probably met Bonsai during the Christmas and New Year's Eve streams. He was the, the shaggy, orange, beautiful Belgian turban. And also, uh, Who, uh, Spike actually lost his pet, and, too. Um, um, yeah, Spike lost his pet today. So there's a lot of that going around. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to support Golden Retriever Rescue of Atlanta because uh, he lives around the Atlanta area. 
So we're going to uh, we're going to support them. Golden retrievers are gentle, loving dogs who want only to to have a caring family. Um, however, all too often they lose their homes because of things. Owners get too sick, can't afford their surgeries, move away, whatever. But sometimes that happens. So they basically go to all the different shelters and, and, and scoop up all these golden retrievers and basically give them good homes and get people to give them good homes. So we're going to be supporting them. So if you go to manlysbrony.com, click on the link and give us a couple of bits, you will be in a drawing for this stuff over here. So we're going to have, just because I have them, a brushable Twilight Sparkle. Everyone needs a brushable book horse. You do. So one of those. I've got little spaghetti hair Rainbow Dash. Spaghetti or Rainbow Dash. Everyone needs one of those. Trust me. And then I've also got the special uh, Nurse Red Heart that you could only get at Walgreens. I got a couple of these more, so you're going to get one of those. Um, and then we're going to go to. Uh, uh, you know what? I got some more of those cards. One of those special cards, so I got another, another set of those. And then we're going to go to comic books. So I got a bunch of comics here for you because Andy's here. So I've got, of course, number 26 The Good, the Bad, and the Ponies which is a beautiful cover, which I just showed off. You'll be getting that. Uh, I also have number 18, cover A, which is one half of There Is More Than One, which was a wonderful idea going through the, the thing, the, uh, the mirror. So one of those. I've also got uh, cover, what's this, B? Cover B of number four, which is also a Cook Price Breckle book. So that's cover B. And I've also got the IDW $1 100 penny press, which is a reprint of number one right there, which came out a couple weeks ago. So you're going to get all of that stuff there. But not only that. No. If we crack 500 bits, 500 bits for these wonderful, wonderful dogs, Andy's going to kick in something. Tell me about it, Andy. Well, <clears throat> I'm going to kick in a case of turtle wax and the home version of our... Of our family game. No. Um, <laughs> I can use the wax. <laughs> actually, I'm going to be kicking in uh, one original page from the comics. Um, <gasps> I've got a couple different pages for the winner to choose from. Uh, you know, that way you kind of get a, a broader uh, range of right. characters to yeah. choose from based yeah. on who your character is. Right. Um yeah. I've got a, a list here in front of me. I've got uh, four pages that they will be able to choose from. Okay. And uh, you probably don't have you know the books to be able to show I, the I, art. I, I don't. However, no. people can look it up. Yes. Look so, it up. starting with Friends Forever, issue 8, page 14. Okay. Uh, which is Rarity and Applejack. Okay. Uh, going way back to issue 2. Issue 2. Page 16. Page 16. Uh, MLP 12, page 2. Page 2. And I do know off the top of my head that features all the main six, Cadence and Shining Armor on that wow. page. So that's a lot of characters that's on that page. And then uh, the Luna Micro, uh, which was the last issue of the Micro uh, Maxi series, okay. uh, which would be page 2. Okay. Which would be Luna and Celestia and Kibitz and Tiberius. Wow, that is stellar awesome because he paid. You'd have to pay five hundred dollars for any one of those pages. Just to oh buy yeah, them. you jeez. Okay, and sometimes <laughs> that's, more. That's just why to buy I that have. page is five hundred dollars. <laughs> okay, so amazingly generous of Mister Price to put up one of those four pages for you because when you win, you get to pick eat which one you want. Yep. Not yep. he's not just giving me any page. He's giving, he, you get to pick one of four pages. Just for giving some money to the Golden Retrievers. And, and who wouldn't want to give money to a wonderful, caring dog? Who wouldn't want to do that? Not me. I can't win because I'm putting this thing on. And now I'm jealous. I can't do it. I could I put, put money in this thing and I can't win. I'll put can, money in it I anyway. But I can't can win. I win, Dusty? Dusty no, can I win? no, you can't win either. <laughs> oh, that's so worth a shot. You, you can't get win either. Nothing. You get nothing. <laughs> and like it. So, all of you people out there, Please go to manlysbrony.com, click on the little icon link, go over and give a couple of bits to the dogs, and you could possibly win all of that stuff and a page of art from this gentleman. Sort of like what I got here from Tony Police, which are awesome to hang on your wall because they're absolutely wonderful bullcat. Beautiful stuff. 
So with that, we move forward. And yes, so now we are into question and answer from the live studio audience. With your pal in mind, Screwball! Who's that? You! <laughs> Uh, well, let's just say, holy hell, heck, there's a lot of questions. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm a glad lot because we got, Goodness. we got like 70 people watching us right now, and then there should be questions. Let's see here. <laughs> so I'll just bring on in. This one's from Toon Geek 45 Question Hi, for Andy. Um, what is your favorite commission someone asked from you? My favorite commission? Wow. Um,. It's hard to pick one. Uh, for one thing, if it's a busy show, I'm doing so many that I can't remember the ones I did in the morning by the time I get to the afternoon. Wow. Um, you know, they go so quickly. However, <clears throat> there's been a couple of the bigger commissions, like the grayscale and the color ones that I've done. Um, at BronyCon this year, uh, I think my favorite one that I did at BronyCon this year, for example was it was the last grayscale commission mm -hmm. and there were so many people lined up to get it that we actually ended up having to do a drawing for it mm -hmm. to try to be fair yes um and the guy who got it he he bought it for his son mm -hmm. for a christmas present he was gonna his son was training to become a boxer wow so he wanted luna as a boxer i remember and that one that, yeah, that was probably my favorite that. one of, of BronyCon. Um, uh, overall, I don't know if I have a, a particular favorite. Um, you know, it goes from convention to convention. Yeah. Uh, I've got, I've, if you get too attached to one piece of art, yeah. you, you don't move forward, I yeah. think. This one, they can, so. this one that I have over my shoulder, which is a Luna Commission, is a full page with the moon over her head, her wings out, and below her hair is the entire galaxy. And it's that Luna in in relief at the bottom of it, which is gorgeous. <laughs> it's like, okay, I gotta show this one because it's like, oh, love Luna around here. Yes. Beautiful piece. Next. Uh, uh, so this one's from, this one's from Mason Alicat. I'm sure you've got this many times. How many pulp culture references can you fit in one panel? All of them. <laughs> However many I can fit. All of them. Oh my goodness. Um, I've actually I've actually lost count of how many references we've done. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like I said. If, if I I usually have the television going while I'm drawing, okay. so if something inspires me, you know, from the television, they'll mm -hmm. say something. I, I might fit something in or whatever. But uh, um, like for example, in the Big Mac issue, mm -hmm. there's a there's a map of the fair, which yeah. in itself is a reference to the to the family circus. Yes. Uh, Sunday comic strips. Mm -hmm. Um. But in that page alone, there's there's references to to Batman, references to Mash, references to uh, God, I I can't even remember myself. I I work in as much as much as entertains me. That's why I do them is to entertain me. Yes. You know, I'm not I'm not worried if people necessarily get the background gag or not because no. it's not integral to the no. story. It's it's. I'm about entertaining, entertaining myself. yourself. <laughs> yes. Well, the um, my my very good friend uh, Jacob, he is like an all out nerd guy, but he, um, I want I I shown him that that one enormous picture uh that shows when the two universes collide in the uh in the reflections arc, mm -hmm. um, yes. and it shows it shows like all the different pictures of all the different ponies in different universes. I showed my friend that I'm like, can you point out the references here? And he's just like pointing fringe, he's pointing everything, and then and then he's just like <laughs> he's just like, dude, I'm not. A brony, but you're really stretching now. I'm gonna become a brony and read these for God's sake. And, and uh, so I kept showing him like I'm. What are they called? The uh, uh, I, I guess you kind of call them like the spectators from Fringe. Yep. Um, you you, the you like you yes. yeah the observers. You you slap them in in all mm -hmm. these different parts and and then ah uh, I show my friend like a whole bunch of them and he's just like dude this is brilliant. I want to meet this guy. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Every issue that I do, somewhere in the issue is an observer. Yeah, mm -hmm. even uh, like even on the on the front cover of Reflections, you actually see one right in the right in the yeah. trees, and it's just like, oh, so good. I, yeah. I love that show. I got all the I got all the uh, uh, seasons actually. <laughs> uh, I've done references to the Blues Brothers, 
to Blazing Saddles to 30 Rock to MASH to The Odd Couple to, you know, just all kinds of different things, yep. you know. Well, you had the, uh, was it uh, Gordon Ramsay bit? I remember that. Was yeah, that Gordon Ramsay. Uh, that yeah. wasn't me. I think oh, that no, was no, one that of was, Amy's. Yeah, that okay. was Amy's. Yeah, one minute thinking, yeah. Yeah. That one was pretty darn funny. I had a good laugh. Yeah, Amy does one. a lot of references, too. She's done references to Sailor Moon mm-hmm. um, and to uh, uh, a lot of Disney references. Uh, she did a great cover for the Western arc uh, of all the girls dressed as different yes. ponies. Yes. I mean, as, as different uh, Western characters. Yes, yes, yes. I have it. Um, I have it. Where is it? Oh, find it, Dusty. Uh, here's <laughs> right there. Yes. So if you can tell who all these six are, that would be awesome. In the chat room, start talking. Yeah, but they're all they're all references there are to references to you know, past Western past characters. Yep. Um, or celebrities. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's gonna take I, a bit because we got that delay. I <laughs> but, I'm, I'm um, holding it up here for about thirty seconds so people can see it. But yeah. So there's a but whole yeah, I'll, I'll put in as there. many. I'll put in as many cultural references is is entertain me <laughs> <laughs> what, I, what i love is that they're putting out you know like this cover which is actually just the pencils of the uh uh book horse reading her her and all the villains in the background that um idw has done a series of books called artist editions yes these are if you're at, at all into art whether mm-hmm. you're into comics or not yes um but especially if you're in your comics, these are incredible, incredible editions. Yes, if you can where find them. they go back, uh, like they're they're putting out one now. They just put out a Charles Schultz artist edition. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're about to put out a Jack Kirby, uh, Commandy, The Last Boy on Earth artist edition. And what they do is they try to track down mm-hmm. the original art, Oof. you know, through collectors or whatever, whoever has these original pages, right. and they get the most up to date modern scans that they can wow and they print them like that so it mm-hmm. looks like you're holding the actual art rather than a printed page yeah. you get to see you know the thumbprints and the pencil marks and the scratches and all the corrections and yeah. any paste ups and anything like that it's it's incredible to see because you can see how the artist worked and yeah. to honor those books they started doing once a year they do a cover that way for each issue that they put out you mm-hmm. know uh, they did it for Ghostbusters, and they did it for Godzilla, and they did it for My Little Pony. Mm-hmm. Uh, so last year was, um, or in 2013, rather, I did a pirate cover. Right. It was published in black and white. Yes. You can see the pencil marks. That's and the, the one I'm missing. I'm missing the uh-huh. cover. It's the only one <laughs> I'm missing. And this year was yes. Twilight reading Twilight the book reading, yeah. with all the villains behind her. Oh, that was I uh, loved that one. Yeah. And they actually published that in both black and white so you can see yes. the, the pencil work and, and everything and then they also published a cleaned up Color version. colored yeah. version which I so have you can get it both ways yeah. yeah I'm missing the pirate issue that you did both of them actually I don't know why I missed them but I did but I'm missing both of those and then they also did this thing called the phantom variant which is really cool because they go back and have artists redraw very famous covers from very famous books like this is Rainbow Dash as the Flash when the Flash came out, Flash number one. And the neat, the neat little things in here, it's like it's approved by the Cantalot Code Authority instead of the Comics Code Authority, which is uh, little things like that. Tony Fleece did this one, but there's a lot of these kind of covers out there, too, yep. which, are, which are always kind of fun. Love comic books. Oh, <laughs> uh, by the way, yes. uh, a lot of people have been really gay in the Westerns. Uh, you got like Clint Eastwood, Jesse from uh, Toy Story, Martin McFly, Lone Ranger, yep. Dale Evans. Dale and, Evans, correct. And, oh, for fudge cakes. One second, I'm trying. I'm trying to I'm brand them all out. Um, there's one other. Yes, Dale Evans is the one people usually yeah. don't. Dale Evans is the yeah. one they usually. Well, don't that's get. fine because because uh, our very awesome friend James Justice, I think James. he might have been the first one to get that. Yes. From what I can see, yeah, he is the good, first. Good job, like, guys. Good job. Yeah. James Justice, that's a good name. He should become yes. an attorney. Well, you know what he is? He is our resident superhero at this show. Well, there you go. He fights off soggy milk because he is the protector of Corn Flake. <laughs> so basically, yes, when he comes around and asks his question, it's usually pretty exciting around here. So I will, you know I what? You know to, what? I will pray to him every time I pour a bowl of cereal. You should. You, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to bring up that question from James Justice. 
<laughs> Resident right. Superhero! What is the question? Of stay boarding, my James friend. What is, what is the question? James Justice. James it's a great name. James Justice. <laughs> I love that name. It's, a, it's an amazing name. <laughs> um, uh, it is. Question is, who uh, influenced your artistic style? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, it's actually uh, there's a lot of different artists. I mean, you know, you ask an artist that, and there's they can go on forever because um, we pick up little bits and pieces of everything we see, you know, from various artists and everything. But my biggest influences um, there's a comic book artist named Don Newton. I think I know Don. Uh, in the seventies and eighties, um, yes. he, he to date is my favorite Batman artist ever. Uh, he was a very big inspiration on me. Don Newton, Jim Aparo, Gene Colan, Joe Kubert, oh yeah, Steve Joe. Rude, uh, Bruce Tim, Adam Hughes, uh, painters like Robert McGinnis, mm-hmm. um, uh, Mark Davis, who was a Disney artist. He designed majority of the Haunted Mansion and the Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh, he cool. designed Maleficent. Um, uh, Charles Schultz. Of uh, you know, you'll see a lot of Peanuts influence in, in some of the gags and some of the art in the MLP comics. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I've, I've got a lot of influences. I pick up things from everywhere I go, but those are the big ones for me. Nice. If you ever come up here, let me know, because I will take you to the Charles Schultz Museum. Uh, I'll go there because oh yeah, I went the first time I went there. I broke down crying. I did. That was like, um, it was maybe a month after Sparky died when I went. You know, somebody asked us recently. Uh, Katie and I were out to dinner with with some people, and we we were talking about old comic strips. And the question that came up of whether we would, if we were given the choice, would I would I pick a Charles Schultz original mm-hmm. or a Bill Watterson original? You know, oh, wow. Calvin Hobbes. That's original. a heck of a choice. And I said, I said in a heartbeat, yeah. no hesitation, Charles Schultz. Yeah. They were like, really? And I said, look at it this way. There'd be no Calvin and Hobbes yeah. if it wasn't for Charles peanuts. Schultz. Yeah. Without Peanuts, there wouldn't be half of the strips out there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I mean, it's almost, just, almost it was every, just such an influence. Almost every comic strip out there is stealing from the Peanuts every every week. Oh, yeah. He's, he was the first one to do a lot of the jokes that are going. He was the first one to actually come up with that format and make it work and make it funny. Yeah. He was very... All the time. He was very ahead of his time. The gags were very esoteric. They were yeah. very cerebral. Yeah. You had to you think know, And everything it. else was more slapstick. Mm-hmm. So it was it was a very unique thing for its time. And we look back at it now, we look at it as kind of quaint, but yeah. uh, we but, wouldn't have yeah, a lot of it. We wouldn't have a lot of it without without yeah. Rolls. So but yeah, my, if you come up here and you have a weekend, you tell me. My personal faves Sounds will always good. be Kelvin and Hobbes and uh, The Far Side. I love The Far Side. Oh, yeah. Okay. Next question. That one I keep going to all over and over. Um, la, la, la. If I was getting myself ready, which I didn't. Um, uh, so this one is from Trailblaze. Um, Andy, if you could write, uh, write a crossover miniseries, what would you cross over with ponies? Hmm. What would I cross over? Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, to be honest, I don't know that I have a lot of interest in that idea. Hmm. We get asked that a lot, right. especially we get begged mm-hmm. at every convention we go to. When are you guys going to do an MLP Doctor Who crossover? Oh, um, yeah. Whenever, whenever, whenever Hasbro can pay BBC enough money. Well, for one thing, <laughs> yeah, that, that's part of it. BBC is very, very strict with their very licensing strict. of, yeah. of uh, Doctor Who, and they actually... IDW no longer has the license for Doctor Who, so that's not going to happen. But I, I think it's too weird. Yeah, I don't know. The the idea just doesn't mesh to me. Mm-hmm. Um, if I was to do a crossover, I don't know. Maybe I would be more along the lines of like something like Looney Tunes, because it's still more in the vein yeah. of what MLP is with the, with cartoons. I'm not interested in Transformers. I'm not interested in and stuff like that. And I think it's a little I think it's a little odd. Mm-hmm. It's not like DC and Marvel where you have the exact same theme. Right. You know, MLP is very very inclusive to itself. It's very unique. Yes. And I don't think there's a lot that matches it. Hey guys. So I think it'd be a difficult thing to do. Hey guys. Yeah. I think I'm getting the signal from Equestria. I think I am. Mm-hmm. It's it's coming in, coming in slowly. Yes. So Twilight has used the mirror again, so I'm getting the signal through from 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 Joe. <laughs> Joe is here, so I've got it. So we're going to Equestria Inquirer right now, so hang tight. Thank you, Dustin.
Dusty Cuts. This just in. Rarity has a crush on Flash Sentry. Wait, is this news? How is the romantic interactions of ponies relevant to international diplomacy and the performance of Tony Romo? Ah, well, the attempted coup. That would do it. It seems that in an attempt to win over the heart of Flash Sentry, Rarity has done her best to imitate his actual crush, Princess Twilight Sparkle. Rarity has wasted time traveling spells, destroyed powerful magical artifacts, and blown up no less than three public libraries in an attempt to make her appear more like Twilight. She has even adopted a pet duck and set it on fire, confusing dragons with ducks. Spike the duck is expected not to make a full recovery. This is not the first time that Rarity has desired to change herself to win over a boy. At one time, she dressed in coveralls and started voting Republican to imitate Applejack, declared war on China to imitate Rainbow Dash, and threw several game-losing interceptions to imitate Tony Romo. During that brief time, Rarity had a confused crush on Cowboy Center Travis Federick. As a last-ditch effort to imitate Princess Twilight Sparkle, Rarity attempted to storm the castle at Canterlot and take Alicorn Magic from Princess Celestia. Rarity was thus transformed into Emmett Smith. On the plus side, she theorized that her now having the all-time record for rushing yards would appeal to Flash Sentry. Sadly, her efforts were to no avail as Flash Sentry quoted, Meh, I'm more of a Packers fan. I'm Joe Stevens, and this has been a news brief from the Equestria Inquirer. Back to you, Dusty Cat. And we're back. That's Joe Stevens of the Equestrian Inquirer bringing us all the news that is fit to print and come through video from Equestria. And Rarity, just Rarity going after Flash Sentry. I just, could, I just can't see it, you know? So but it's, it's really weird. And then she's all about <laughs> the NFL playoffs. How did that happen? I don't know. I just don't. That's weird. And somehow I have to fix that whole thing out. You guys can hear us when I'm playing videos. <laughs> okay, I was, I was wondering. I was just yes. like, why is Dusty so quiet? And then, and then, and then, so yes. Andy starts talking. I'm yes. just like, uh, something's up. Something's up. I'm scared. <laughs> you know what? I can fix that. I can fix that in post. Okay, I can fix that in post, and I will. But yeah, rarity I, in the NFL. I can't, I can't I, I, see. I, I can't figure, see I figure, rarity uh, watching the NFL. I can't either. I need to fix that, but I will. We'll figure it out. Bash script will help me figure that one out. And we're back. We we only have a few minutes left, so throw them out here in a hurry. They're just Hit me up. Throw them in a hurry. Oh, yeah, I, the single tear runs down my face. I'm a, uh, I guess this is a sort of a difference. Um, this is from Moon Solace. Um, question for you, Andy. What was the most difficult comic you've worked on, like in general, of all the issues you've done? Uh, of the MLP comics, uh, the most Maybe. difficult. Uh, the most difficult easily was uh, issue 17. That was the one where Hasbro changed half the book on us Oof. Uh, after I was done drawing it. And I had to go in and, and draw, everything, change a bunch of the pages. So number 17 was easily the hardest for me because of that reason. It's crazy. I want to see the original so damn bad. <laughs> yeah. yep. I've well, got them. I'll show them someday. If, if you do end up showing them, just, just tweet to me or something. And, oh, yeah. Uh, I'll freak out. <laughs> yep. So issue seventeen was the most difficult uh, for that for that reason. Mm -hmm. Next, uh, I, oh. I know you what did next? tell me. I did tell me you. You did tell me one thing that they changed, which actually kind of broke my heart. <laughs> I was going to say what it is, though. But I think you know which one um, I speak. Oh yeah, of, but yeah, uh, I know but yeah it about. it broke my heart. It actually did. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so this one. Uh, ooh. So this is from Trailblades to okay. Andy. Which cover are you most proud of? After seeing it on the comic, um, I think uh, the cover to number, I think it's number twenty with okay. Celestia and Celestia fighting the yes. blue universe and red universe. Celestia fighting uh, is my one of my favorites. Um, but also uh, issue twenty six, I was very happy with the way it ended up printing. Mm -hmm. um, it's a method that doesn't take very well to reproduction. Um, that's that cover is done in a layer style painting. If you were to see it in person, it looks three dimensional because there's various clear layers with different types of paint and mediums on them yeah. stacked together. And it doesn't always reproduce very well. Mm -hmm. um, it's better in person, but it actually reproduced pretty well. So I was, I was pretty happy with, with that. Yes. Uh, and That's the good. upcoming spike cover that I was describing, I like. So. Ish. Uh. So this is from Otaku Squirrel. Uh, hey, Otaku, how you oh, doing? I know that bum. 
Yeah, you know, he wrong. has those kind of losers on this friend. show. I know. <laughs> and he wants fun. to ask you, Andy. Uh, what pony would you like to uh, would you like to work with that you haven't had the opportunity opportunity to explore yet? Ooh, good question. Uh, I have not done anything in the comics with Maud. I thought Maud was hysterical. Mm -hmm. oh, she's her. so amazing. Um, she, I don't know how much more you could do with her, but I, I'd be interested in finding out. Um, I also loved Flutterbat. Mm -hmm. I'd love to, to do something with that idea. Um, and I can't really say anything. <gasps> there. But um, there's so much stuff I wish I could tell you guys that I know of. It's, it's that just, I know it's of that we're, that that Katie and I have coming up. That the book in general has coming up. And things that I know about the show that are coming up, <gasps> oh. that I, wish I could say and I can't say, and I so direly want to say. And eh, we'll talk after the show. And, <laughs> and oh my gosh, oh my gosh! But I, I, I'd love to do, I'd love to do something with Maude. I'd love to do something with Flood Rat. Um, anytime, anytime we work with Luna, I'm, I'm ready to. Oh yeah. To go back, you know, I love, I love doing Luna. What would it be awesome? Um, what would be awesome is if you guys did a story of her guards, the Thestrals, and what it's like to actually be a guard to Luna. Actually, something with the uh, with the Bat Ponies would yeah. be interesting to find out. You know that they are their own, their own beings, species. That they, yeah. They're their own kind of offshoot. Uh, I think that's kind of interesting. That'd be interesting to explore. So there's still a lot of okay. a lot of stuff tons, to be told. Tons you know? of stories to be told. Uh, yeah. So we did. Uh, Without saying too much, we are introducing a new species. Ooh. Um, I, I shouldn't say new. A new to MLP okay. species. Is, okay. is, um, let me guess. That it's hasn't really been explored. It's something Greek mythology or something like that, isn't it? Nope. Or, or no. not something mm. Really? That no. actually nope. really intrigues me it's now. <laughs> nothing to do with mythology. Very generic species, but but when you, when you kind of stop and look back and, and think, Okay, well, this that makes sense. Why they would be this way? Mm -hmm. uh, when the idea came up, I was kind of like, well, "Why didn't we think about this before?" There you go. Uh, and I was, I was really, I really liked them, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm really hoping we can do something with them again. Okay. Uh, it's just a two issue story, so we we didn't get to explore them much. Uh huh. Uh, and that's the kind of thing that that drives a lot of readers crazy because it just opens up questions. Questions. You know, questions. but that means that means that there's more room to explore. So, yes. Next. So, yeah. mm. so this one is from Spock Farmane. Uh, question for you, Andy. What's your favorite fan experience? Wow. Um, at every show, I meet phenomenal fans. I mean, just incredible fans. Um, and every time, I'm still amazed. Somebody will come up and do something that is always very humbling, very flattering, very entertaining, whatever. Um, the fans are great. I think overall, though, the people that that come up with their kids, uh, especially little kids that come up clutching the comic book. You know, here's this comic book in their hand, and it is ragged and torn and stapled together, and they love it. And that's that's an incredible thing to see this kid love what you do. Um, you know, beyond, you know, to hear about a fan, you know, oh, I'm going to buy five copies of the book and I get one CGC grade and I put them away. You know, that's great and everything, but yeah. comics are made for reading and for enjoying. Oh, made for reading. Here's this kid just loving it. And we talked to one parent with a kid. They, they asked us to autograph the, the kid's book. And the kid's book was just, Looked like it had gone through the apocalypse. Looked like it was dragged behind Mad Max's car, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, and they gave it to us to sign. The kid was mad. Give me my book back, and the parent was like, "You know, she sleeps with the book." Wow. And the, I I don't know of anything more flattering that I yeah. could ever hear. Yeah. You know, and parents come up to us and tell us, "My child is learning to read on your comic book," and that's incredible. You know, mm -hmm. not only am I entertaining. You know, a little kid, but you know they're learning, and they're enjoying a comic book. You oh, know, yeah. they will go on and enjoy other comic books. They will, they will pick them up. Mm -hmm. uh, I have fans that come up to me and give me artwork. 
Um, I had a fan give me a sculpture of my OC. Nice. Oh, nice. You know, things like that. These are just incredible experiences. Well, um, that's like that, you know, the sculpture of the day and night cover. Yes. Oh, and, oh um, that goodness. was brilliant. Oh, my goodness. You know, what, what was very, one of the things that was very flattering about that is before the woman started on that, it was a commission for somebody. They came to her and said, I want this commission. And she said, not until I get cleared from him mm-hmm. that it's okay. And she asked me, and she didn't have to. Yeah. She certainly didn't have to. It's, it's out on a comic book cover. Mm-hmm. But I thought that was very, I, I really thought that was very touching that she would come to me and say, you know, is this okay? What do you think of it? Does it live up to the art? Well, I thought it was incredible. Oh, yeah. It was just astounding. I wanted it. <laughs> she's, uh, she's actually doing like commissions currently. Mm-hmm. I don't know if yeah. she's still open or not, but as soon as I heard that her commissions were open, my jaw just dropped. I'm like, oh, I need to scrounge up money or something because she's brilliant yeah. at what she does. Like, but like you're true, true good. What? You're moving. So. Oh yeah, I know. That's the problem. You're moving. So. For fudge cakes. For fudge cakes. <laughs> so I think with that one, I think we're going to end right there because that's a wonderful moment to end the show on. Right there. Wonderful moment to end the show on. So I want to show, I want to show you guys that we still do have a t-shirt available. And it's this one. And this one is now on our red bubble. Not EFN's. Go to ours, which is Stay Brony. We have our own red bubble now called Stay Brony. So if you go to red bubble, go to Stay Brony, You'll find this design. You'll find me sitting there with a mug of cider that you can put on just about anything, not just T-shirts. So go there. We're going to get some more designs so you guys can make more stuff and you can support the show. Now you're supporting the show directly, okay? So if you want to pick up a T-shirt, pick up a mug with my stupid mug on it, then you can do that. So (laughs) go to Redbubble, Stay Brony, and you can pick up a couple of pieces of merch from us and then you can help support the show. Thank you very much for supporting the show. Thanks for coming here every time. And I'm humbled that you guys would come and see us all the time. Um, thanks go out to Mr. Price for taking time out of his busy schedule. You wouldn't believe we talked before the show, and him taking an hour and a half out of his day is you wouldn't believe. <laughs> yeah, I should be inking right now. You should be inking I mean, right now. He does he have a deadline. should be doing the comic that this is all about. So. He, should, he has a deadline, so I thank him yes. very much for taking time Thank out you, of his Andy. Day. Um, thank screw, you guys screwy. very, very much for oh, having yeah. me. Screwy for doing everything he does, for coming with me to the new channel. Amy, my wonderful girlfriend, who'll show up here probably in 20 minutes after I turn this thing off. Lance and you guys, Bo- I know yeah. there's I know there's questions that didn't get answered. If yes. you want to send them to me an email, I'll yes. try to answer them for you. And you can read them out or send them back to people or whatever you want to do. That's Andy Price Art at? Uh, no, you guys send it to me. Okay. Yeah, you we'll guys send, send them. me the so, list of questions. Yeah, send us the list of questions. Give us the list of questions. We'll make the list and we'll send them to Andy. And then we'll yes. have them. And then I'll put them up somewhere. But we'll, we'll get yeah. that taken care of. Um, Lance, who, without him, none of this would happen. Nathan, our roommate, bash script for th- for welcoming us to come over. Can't everybody can't let Hill for for welcoming us welcoming us over here. Um, everybody working on MLP from Andy and and the people that do the comic to the people that do the animation to the people that do the storyboarding because we just heard that the storyboards are done for the next season. The storyboards are over, locked, so they're moving on. We're gonna get some animation soon. Thank you very yep. much. And everybody, you out there coming and following us over here at Candlelight Hill and coming and watching us make dang fools of ourselves every time I turn on a dang camera. Every time. Thank you. Hey, Screwball. Yeah? Who's our next guest? I actually don't know. <gasps> you don't? I looked. I uh, while, we, while we were all talking, you I'm like, change? he's going to ask that question. I checked, but why... I, I don't know if there's somewhere off my internet. It's not seem to load for me, and I was uh-huh. freaking out. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, our next guest is uh-huh. your why uh-huh. fool stealing bad boy Brad Vincent Tong returns to talk about his projects, Rainbow Rocks. I love that man. Flash <laughs> Sentry, everything. Everything. I love Vincent I love Tong. Vince. He's so awesome. Two weeks to Vincent Tong, people. So Vincent's coming back. Mm, yes. So yes. <laughs> with that, we're out of here. Thank you very much again, Andy. We'll get all those questions to you as soon as we can. Very welcome. I'll keep you un- informed about how the charity goes so we can get the right. winner to you. And thank you very much. Everybody out there, mwah, thank you. We'll see you in two thank weeks. Thank you much. Bye-bye. Bye.
Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. We hate to leave you, but we'll be back soon. Good night, sweetheart. Good night. Good night. Sweet I know they can hear us now. Good night. Yeah, good night. Good night. Good night. Well, it's time to go. I can't say. <laughs>